Hello, thank you so much for joining us. We are Nerds of the West, and today we are teaching you how to play Dune Arrakis, Dawn of the Fremen. This is an area control game set many, many, many years before the events of the film Dune. We are gonna be showing you all the things you need to know to dive right into this cutthroat area control resource management game. This is the map we are going to be playing on, and we, the people, are. My name is Tom, we have a Billy. Hey, how you going? We have a Kai. Give me the water. And we have a Sean. I'm the Quidaz Hadarak. Let's, let's hope not. That's going to make it difficult. Uh, to win Dune War... For, uh, the War... For, no, that's the other game. Yep. To win... <laughs> there was two games at the same time. We already got confused. We might cut this out. We might not. We like games here. Dune, Arrakis, Dawn of the Fremen. You need to control three sieges. Let's chuck some sieges down on the board. Or if you are in an alliance, you only need to control five between you and your teammate. So... How do you get sieges? How do you win? Well, to start off the game, there are no resources on the board. So that is what we need to sort right now. Putting resources and putting yourself on the board is kind of part of the setup and kind of part of the gameplay. Right now, Billy is the hard leader and we are in the hard stage. Billy is going to roll the dice for me over here. That is a five, which means we need five rock barriers that are going to cut off sections of this board. Hell yeah. Ooh. Does this mean I'm going to get to place two? You get to place, you will. You place one right now, anywhere on the board, covering off this area. And that means people without mm. sufficient technology cannot go through that border. It means that when you are producing resources, you don't get to get double the production if you have a seat. We'll come back to that later. You're tempted to do it, aren't you? <laughs> I'm putting it on the, He's the holo. Immediately blocking that one off. <laughs> it's a real dick move, but it's a good move. You now cannot move through that without having a steel suit or an ornithopter, and it means your power when you're fighting doesn't get counted, which means that place could be very safe or very dangerous. Kai now gets to put one down. I'm going to plonk one down and block the deep pass from the rocky ridges. Once we have put all those down, we'll continue to do so, we are then going to put resources down randomly. Uh, the resources are currently face down. We do not turn them face up when we put them down, but we do get to choose where they go. Um, we'll choose that spot there. Ooh. The temptation to like extend one of the borders that you guys have done, but I'm actually gonna put it on Beast Mesa. Ooh, well. all right, Billy's playing a real turtle game. Then we need to start putting resources down. We start with Billy again. Ooh, yep. Dude. Face down wherever you think is a good spot to put it. And these resources will be water, food, spice, uh, two different kinds of spice, some spice that produces in a full moon and some spice that produces in a crescent moon, moon and worm teeth. Playing very centrally at the moment. Uh, these will then be flipped up and you choose one at a time placing your warriors on the board and a warrior signifies that you control that space. So now we will flip all those up, we will see what uh, resources we are fighting over. You do remove some resources at random before placing them out. And now, starting with Billy once again, we will get to choose where we go on the board. And choosing control is somewhat important because if you control an area with resource production, it is going to give you those resources. Choosing areas that are next to each other are going to help you defend those spaces better and also give you more options for attacking spaces later on. Definitely going here. Yeah, there was <laughs> no doubt. Friendly neighbors. <laughs> friendly neighbors. Friendly, friendly neighbors. I want to. Sorry, the last resource. I want to be on the board. <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to go. Definitely still places yep. on the board. <laughs> and this is where it gets interesting because they're all over there. Everyone in a four player game will have four spaces, uh, nine spaces on the board that they now control. Uh, once you have those areas controlled, you take two different kinds of cycles throughout the game that are going to go through all of these phases. Uh, the first cycle is called the initiation cycle, and all of these different phases will happen. Uh, we do not develop, I apologize, we do not do all phases. Development will not happen, which is where you get to use the resources that you have on the board to build things, like your steel suits, your um, 
knives, Chris knives, and eventually your sieges. We will, however, do production and everything will produce. We will do trade and everyone can trade. And we will do shipment, which is where you move things around the board. We will then do action. And in the first cycle, you cannot take two attack actions. You can only take one. And then we have the cancel phase. And I'll get to the cancel phase at the end. That is a little bit weird. In the development phase, you can build things. You pay the cost of what you have there, as shown, and you get to build in the place where you have those resources. Resources aren't placed onto your tableau, they are always on the board. So if you want to build a Chris knife in chipped rock, you have to have two spice or a water and a worm tooth in that space. You will roll this dice for anything that has this lovely spinny symbol and some things will happen and some things won't. Sometimes you will vote on when things happen and sometimes the lead player will get to choose if things happen. Most of the time if something happens those things will then produce in the production phase. However we get to choose whether we are on the crescent moon side or the full moon side. As you can see this spice has a full moon and it will only produce during a full moon phase. Sometimes both will produce and that is totally fine. If a worm symbol comes up, which is this one here, that will mean that you will lose a worm. In the production phase, you will get to generate new worms and you will upgrade your worms to the great maker side, um, thereby getting more movement and more attack power. Because it's an area control game, we're gonna be attacking each other. The trading what? phase, you can trade things one for one. Um, there are specific rules about what you can and can't trade and it basically comes down to Unless you're in an alliance, you're just trading resources or tokens one for one, including your water debt tokens. They're going to be important. We'll come back to them. We then have the shipment phase where you can move things around the board. Most things only have a movement of one, so you're going to grab your resources and move them one at a time. But if you start getting still suits and Chris knives and worms, you can start moving things more. Each one has a movement uh, symbol next to its power symbol, and you're going to be able to move that that many borders around that you control. You can pay water debts, they come up every so often, to move through someone else's if you have their water debt. You don't pay your own water debt. If they have given you a water debt by trading or by combat, you can then give that water debt back to them to move through their area. So, once we have done all the lovely resource management, it gets to the action phase. And the action phase is split into two phases. Uh, you have the first one, which you can choose to do a scavenge action, where you take from the scavenge deck, and that can be either free resources, feel free to show them off, uh, it can be extra cards, it can be specific things that will give you a one-off bonus, and some things that will give you a bonus later on. Uh, scavenge cards are always revealed to everyone. So today we will be showing them off as, like so, uh, and scavenge cards are either shuffled back into the deck or removed from the game entirely. They will say that at the bottom, so make sure you check which is which. You can then take an action, uh, an attack action in that phase. And then the second phase, you can either take a second shipment action or you can take a second attack action. In the first cycle, you cannot take two attack actions just to make everything nice for everyone because once you're playing in order, that becomes a very uh, important thing. In most games, attacking would just be 1v1. I want to attack Billy's strength. Right now, we have one strength and one strength. If we have some Chris knives or some still suits or some worms in that space, I then have a, a Chris knife and Billy has a worm. I have four, he has three. Except in this game, you don't just count the power that you have in that section, you count the power you have in each section touching it. So I currently have three attack power and one there, and Billy has the, th uh, the three there. Billy also has his additional two here for a total of five, and I have an extra one, two, three, four, taking me up to a total of seven. I would then move in, replace Billy's warrior with one of my own, and keep any items that are in that space. Worms are items in this game, because worms are a commodity. Uh, when you take control of someone's area, you also get to murder their warrior and steal the water from their body, because water is an important resource. So we will put a water token down on that space and then I can use that in a later space, in a later time. Uh, we then have the opportunity before we calculate all of that to ask other people if they want to join the battle. So for one of the more complicated attack areas up the top there, say we're attacking Kai's space up here. 
Sean might attack into there and he can ask me because I am nearby if I want to defend Kai or if I want to help him in the attack. I get no bonus from this, but we can possibly organize a way to help each other out in the future. Or I just might really want to stop Kai from having that space. Why? Just, I don't like you. <laughs> I'm already in depression, man. <laughs> um, you can stop someone attacking a space you control with two of their water debts. And when you attack someone, you will give them your water debts. So if I take that space from Billy, I then must give him one water debt if he has one to three power that he has lost, or if he has lost four or more, I give him two water debts. And thereby, I cannot keep attacking him continuously because he can just plop those two water debts down. And for the rest of this round, I cannot take any attack actions in that controlled area. I can, if someone else attacks, choose to defend. And then once everyone has taken actions, you move into the council phase. And in the council phase, you can all unanimously vote to change the game in just about any way you wish. While the game suggests that you only change win conditions if the game is proving too difficult to win, i.e. you can choose that alliances can win with four features instead of five, you can do that, but it has to be unanimous. This is also where you can vote on alliances, and alliances also have to be unanimous. I just can't go to Sean and be like, hey man, we're, we're, we're doing good together, let's, let's, have some, let's have some fun. No. These guys have to agree and most likely form their own alliance or add conditions onto the alliance, i.e. we have to have six Seachers to win. Uh, Seachers will be placed down on the board as you go in the development phase. They are the most expensive thing to build. However, they will double the production of anything you have and any surrounding spaces that you have production in. So anywhere where Sean might have a bunch of stuff producing all next to each other suddenly becomes very important to control. Seachers cannot move. They do add one strength to anything nearby, but their strength doesn't carry through rock barriers. Most things don't carry through rock barriers, and they can be taken by other players, so build them carefully. If you decide that you are out of the game, you are allowed to leave. You can just pack up and walk away from the table. You have no chance of winning. All your warriors are removed from the table, but all items are left behind. If you're in an alliance, all your warriors turn into that of your ally, um, but that can be negotiated once again when the alliances are formed. This is a very cutthroat game. Things are going to get very difficult as we jockey over resources. If you want to see it played, now that we have put out everything onto the board, we are about to do a full gameplay of this. You can join us on twitch.tv slash nerds of the west in the future, but that gameplay video will be up on YouTube very soon. Final thoughts, are we ready to go? Are we ready to fight? I'm excited to stab some backs. <laughs> the last so thing we have to do, Put out worm tokens. Everyone gets one worm to start the game with. You put it in one area that you control, remembering that worms, Billy, cannot move through rock barriers. So you probably don't want to put one in there. It'd be pretty cool defending you. <laughs> It'd be very good defense. <laughs> uh, we're going to put the worm here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop my worm here. Hello, sir. My areas. <laughs> Look at my uh, worm. <laughs> uh, let's go. And without further ado, we're going to start playing June, Arrakis, Dawn of the Fragment. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>